New York's ghost. Oh. If you were as rich as um, Vince McMahon, what would be the first thing you'd do? I'd pay Mick Foley to dance for me. <laughs> <laughs> like one of Jack's French floozies in Titanic. <laughs> Dance for me like one of your French women. <laughs> I'm going to draw you. Uh. So th this this is... Oh, fuck, look at the raw set. That is so weird. That's old, isn't it? Yeah. It wouldn't even... Ah, oh, come on. That's a funeral. <laughs> this man is dead, Mick. This man is dead. Come on now, I'm all for I'm all for combat, but we have to understand this is a funeral. <laughs> Bit of decorum, please, Michael. God's sake! There's a grieving family here. <laughs> You're th throwing the coffin around. <laughs> animals, animals. Oh, he still has that weird on, on um, like mankind sign on his back as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he's got the rat. That's, that's quite nice, actually. So this was the Ooh. first Boiler Room Brawl. Yeah. And I think I enjoyed this one. I've seen others since, and I have not been so enthused. Mm. I think it worked really well one time, but... Yeah. Was there... What, who was the other one? Was there a Kane? Was, um, yeah, I'm pretty Man sure it was a Kane Man Kane one. Oh, someone got thrown through a window in that one, didn't they? Yeah, I think I think man game was was thrown through. I love how you like this is. There, there's it wasn't a big pop there for the Undertaker. Yeah. Whereas at Re WrestleMania three one, yeah, fucking hell, the pop was huge. Who, it was who was he fighting? Deafening. Uh, Bray Wyatt. Oh, I saw footage of your man doing the crab thing, and then the Undertaker does the sits up, the sit up. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a great match. It was really weird to watch. It was like watching a porn movie. Really? Yeah, because um, there were lots of things that the Undertaker did where he, obviously he was in control. He was mm. the ring general, mm. um, so he was calling the entire match. But <laughs> it reminded me of like in porn movies where where the the guy would be like, move, no, move your hand out of the frame. You know, you're, yeah. you're you're blocking the business or yeah. something like that. Um, oh, you ruined the cum shot. What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> yeah, and, and there were bits like that where like, Bray Wyatt would do something, the Undertaker would like gently move his arms out of the way or, 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 or you know, move the hair out of his face to kind of say, let, let, let's, see, let's see that the camera can see this. It was really weird to watch. Yeah? Yeah, and it was really slow-paced. Huh. Yeah. And, and it was in broad daylight. It was during the day. Because it was like in a, in a an stadium, open an open dome stadium, yeah. I don't like that shit for wrestling events, actually. I don't mind it for mid-card, but for yeah. higher... I mean, like... Fucking hell. Should be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like... How good would it have been The Undertaker came out in pure darkness, you know? Yeah. What Bray Wyatt had for his... The openings were, were actually quite fun. The um, Triple H's opening... Well, Sting's opening was, was brilliant because he Come had... Come down through the rafters, is he? Nope. No, because we're no rafters. Oh, yeah, he, um, that would have been a, a no, no, no. from a chopper. <laughs> God, that would have been so good. Actually, that would be fucking great. Yes, yeah. Uh, oh fucking hell! If you want that idea, you're gonna have to pay us minimum three. Yeah, that's right, three thousand dollars. <laughs> you want that idea? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that's a, that's a thin room for the Undertaker to be walking towards as well. Jesus Christ, he's a massive man, isn't he? He's really tall. Uh, Sting had... Oh, danger! Sting Ooh. had uh, a bunch of guys playing drums dressed as, like, Onis. Cool. Because he has the he has the, the um, makeup. The fuck, I can't remember. Japanese no theatre, but I can't remember the actual term for it. Um, Kabuto or something like Kabuki. that. Kabuki. Kabuki, might be. Kabuto was a Pokemon. <laughs> a kabuki Pokemon ah um, and and that was pretty awesome fucking Triple H had the weirdest intro it, it really needs to, uh, to be seen to be believed 
Okay, I'll watch this when I go back. Actually. Yeah, I can't really explain it um, because it'll, it'll ruin it for you. Okay. But whenever it happened, it was like... Oh, this is amazing! I was going... Eh. It's still ultimately Triple H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is... Um, let's see. Uh, I Bray Wyatt had really a really weird uh, in, entrance where there was a bunch of guys dressed as scarecrows. And as he walked past them, they came to life and kind of shambled down to the ring. Very cool. And then the Undertaker just did a slow walk. Uh. But it was a slow walk during the day. Yeah. So it was more of a stroll than <laughs> a bit of he a song. A bit of a tramp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think it was really the only big entrances. Yeah. That 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 were in it. Best match. Best match. Yeah. Uh, the opening was fucking great. The opening was um, a seven-man ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. There mm. was um, the Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar match was 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 good for the end. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Of the, oh, the Triple H Sting match was all right, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it was re- really good storyline going on. NWO and DX came out. Was Sting pretty good? Yeah, I mean, like, he was entertaining, standard. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. The Divas match was shite. Oh, oh. Oh, oh is that a two by four? Work him over. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, get him. Was it a two by four? Nah. It was like a piece of metal, was it? <laughs> Damn, oh, Mick, fuck, oh, this okay. is your home. You could pick a better weapon than that. Jesus. <laughs> what, you couldn't even jimmy rig it to break? Oh, there was a bit with that where, where, where they both had like um, their weapons. So Triple H had his sledgehammer and Sting had his baseball bat. Okay. And um, Sting was going over on Triple H and Triple H held the baseball bat up, you know, to kind of block it. Yeah. And the bat went right through it. Oh, Snapped cool. It clean in half. It was fucking great. Everybody freak out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... There was there was a battle royale, which was okay, I suppose. Like battle royales, don't really like them because they're just schmozzes. Yeah. There's not really a story. It's just a bunch of lads beating on each other, and, and then some of them falling out of the ring. Yeah, you know. And it's not until like the very end, like they, they did a really good job where everyone would would like kind of beat on each other, and then two people would be in the center of the ring having like a storyline. Yeah, you know, um, like one of the guys, um, it's actually. Mr. Perfect's son, um, Curtis Axel. Mm. He uh, he he was uh, not eliminated from the Royal Rumble because he was beaten up on the way to the ring, and so his thing is it's Axel Mania. I've been in the Royal Rumble for fifty three days, brother. Oh, okay, <laughs> he's never been eliminated. That's awesome. Yeah. So he he had a huge bit at the start where he like tore open his t shirt. You know, he has like the Axel Mania thing on. It's quite good. Oh fuck. It was like a stunner over what apparently is a, a workman's, workman's bench. bench in the middle of a boiler room. You interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a bunk bed. <laughs> Mankind makes the best bunk beds in the WWF. So I made Johnson's like, oh, Mick, I need two bunk beds for the <laughs> weekend. Can you have it done? Well, uh, I'll give you a quote. <laughs> And he's got like, you know, that visor, you know, <laughs> licking his thumbs to try and tell, I'll give you it in triplicate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty busy this weekend. Goldust wants a corner cabinet for his kitchen. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, well, maybe that's why the place is such a mess. I know. As it's well. a society. Man, it's working. No wonder he's angry. And been interrupted at work. Have you got business, Undertaker? I uh-huh. know. If you had, you wouldn't have approached that way. You'd have called the man first. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming, coming down to your office. I'm, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for an island in the middle of the kitchen. If anything, mankind is just protecting his... Inv- oh, 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 oh. He is protecting his livelihood. Uh-huh. And any measure that a man <laughs> takes for that. In this instance, I would call Undertaker 
Big government is what Big I'm government. He's interrupted a man at work. I wonder why that feed just went weird. Like, obviously that was probably... Yeah, that oh, was It might weird. have been a cut, maybe. Yeah, I would think so. Maybe they had a break, a cup of tea. <laughs> Union mandated chat? tea. I mean, I remember reading about this in, in um, Blood, Sweat and Socks. Mm. How he's talking about, like, this had never really been done before. Yeah. Because you know, this wasn't done live. Yeah. yeah this, this was filmed beforehand. And then they would come out to the ring for the finish yeah yeah actually not a bad evening's work for them actually no 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 it's not like to, to choreograph the whole thing as well I mean they could have done it really cheesily and had like a, a number of cameras set up yeah like for you know big dramatic turns and stuff like that but but that yeah you're not you're gonna lose something there I think yeah you could they could actually do some of this stuff now they could do something like this with a couple of cameramen yeah just stalking around with those like $400 cameras and it would look pretty good yeah I, I remember um, um, who was it I was, I was talking to someone about um, you know the the belts in the WWE yeah and how um, for a while there the belts were oh that's good Oh, I think he must have had a fire extinguisher hidden in that. Hot steam in the face. Yeah. Why do we even have that that valve that, that puts off the steam? Um, it's so dangerous. <laughs> Shouldn't it be directed upwards <laughs> into a vent? <laughs> or just somewhere else? <laughs> Anywhere else? Oh, I love his spats. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, like, like for a while the belts were actually... St- like, um, fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? like type of match based if you know what I mean so like the hardcore belt was obviously whenever there was a hardcore match weapons would be involved yes um, for the uh, intercontinental and European it would be either like technical wrestling or high flying oh okay you know and then then the the actual heavyweight championship would be the standard high, rules yeah yeah but that the high carters who put on a good match but it's you know quite slow paced not as fast as maybe the Intercontinental okay because I'm, I'm thinking about it from like a like Wrestlemania 16 the European and Intercontinental belts were put on the line by Kurt Angle okay I think um, yeah it was Kurt Angle and Benoit and Jericho won them okay yeah and that was a know, fucking great match yes it was because uh, Kurt lost both of them and wasn't pinned once yeah. Yeah, I think Benoit made Jericho submit. Oh, fuck, he's bleeding. And then it was the same the other way around for Jericho. Oh, that was a great yeah. match, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, oh, 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 oh. Oh, and the crowd, oh, oh. Big shout for the low blow there. And, uh, yeah, like, both Jericho and um, Kurt Angle would have been not high flyers, but they would have done a bit of moon salts and jumping about the place. Yeah. Uh, but then Benoit and Kurt Angle were both submission experts. Yeah. So. So yeah. So like, oh, it's it's an intercontinental match, is it? Oh well, then I know I'm going to have this, this, and this going for it. You know, whereas now that there's not really, it's it's more like storyline based. Yeah, they don't really give a fuck about the belts anymore, do they? Except for the big one. Well, they they do give a fuck about the, about the 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 other ones. But um, only because the the wrestlers are fan favorites, you know. Yeah. So um, like Intercontinental it has like um, Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan and all these boys fighting for it. Yeah. Yeah, and then the American one was for a while it was Sheamus, and then it was Rusev. So then it became more of a oh fuck, let's take Rusev down because he's Russian. Okay. Yeah. You know. And uh, but that said, though the 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 actual big belt has in a year only changed hands three times. Yeah, that's the way. Like it used to be, like that someone would have a fucking belt for yeah year mm-hmm. two years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like um, I think it was May Young held the, the women's belt for twenty six years or something. Fucking hell! Yeah, that's now see that's too long. <laughs> There's a limit there. Yeah. And then they did away with the belt as well for ages. 
and then they brought it back. So at this time, there were because there there hasn't been any women's fights. Yeah, and there won't be them for a couple of years. This is 1986. Yeah, there won't be a women's match for know, a couple of years. But yeah, now though the women's thing is shite as well. So if you know if you want a match to sw- to skip, you put on the fucking divas championship because there's no there's no women. I like. Yeah, I don't. Do they just get the women? Do they get oh, them on TV album. before they're actually ready? Is that what the problem is? That's what. Yeah, like what they're doing now is that the women who are trained wrestlers and talented uh, are few and far between. Mm. You know, like. I haven't enjoyed a women's match in the WWE in years. Um, the NXT matches complete like like the other week on NXT. Oh, that was a shitty DDT. The the other week on NXT, they actually had a main event women's championship match. Okay, as a main event, and I think that's yeah. fucking great. Yeah, and, and and it was great. It was it was really entertaining to watch. You know, easily on par with any of the the men's matches. Yeah. But, I don't know, like, we, we've talked before about the belts and how you say that, like, you know, if someone has a belt for X amount of t- yeah. Yeah, weeks, then... Like a league yeah. promotion system. I don't know, because how else do you make these belts matter? Yeah. Because otherwise it should be just like, we're. otherwise you might as well just go, I'm going to fight until I'm popular enough yeah. <laughs> to go for this championship. Well, well, the thing is, like, you know, it's never really mentioned, but in cafe if you're a champ then you earn more money mm. you know like Paul Bear mentions it a couple of times about like how he's gonna bring this belt the whole way to the bank yeah okay. you know so so if, if you've got the championship then and you defend the championship then you earn more money okay for yeah for a defense so I mean I don't know maybe incorporate that somehow more kind of rights so you want it because your job I don't know your job is more secure or yeah better parking I don't fucking ah. know something to make these belts like because otherwise we'd be like oh you're in a a fight for the European Championship I'd be like no why would I waste my time with this I'm going to wait for the WWE Champion to come in I'm going to sneak attack him and get in a feud <laughs> with him yeah oh look at this shit oh fuck I don't know it just seems like they, they don't matter at all like the Intercontinental definitely used to matter Yes. Used to be a really big deal. Pat Patterson. First yeah. Intercontinental Champion, I think it was Pat Patterson. The Macho Man had it. Oh, For yeah. ages. Oh, yeah. Dropping the elbows. <laughs> Cream of the crap. Cream. <laughs> was, it, was it you told me that they used to just, like, give him a prop? And go. Go. Go do a promo with this. What's my motivation? <laughs> Put it this way: You've got a prop. <laughs> You've got a fight coming up. You're angry. It's Mean Gene. Go, <laughs> Mean Gene. You bore out reason. Oh, your mustache is on crooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what a guy! Macho Man's a great guy. Did you watch an Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? The Macho Man bit. Oh fuck! What was it? Was it, oh yeah, 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 yeah! Unbelievable, wasn't it? Well, right, she, she's like, broke her Hulkamania. Yeah, yeah, she had Hulkamania, and she's standing on top of the table, just go, you know, like doing the years. I tell your brother, <laughs> what are you gonna do, brother? When Hulkamania runs wild on you, but she's really polite. She's like Hulk Hogan, it's Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no! Oh, there he's up. Oh, oh. You Ooh. should have expected this mankind. Where are you going? Oh. Uh-oh. 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 He's gone over. Oh. Oh, Christ. Fuck. It looks like there's something underneath that tarp as well. Like, that could have gone badly wrong. If he had hit that, that whatever, it must be a box or something. Someone's just going to come in a second. Has anyone seen my box of broken glass? <laughs> My broken glass collection. I always keep it in the boiler room because no one comes. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, you broke it into smaller pieces. Hmm. Those pieces were perfect. <laughs> yeah, these were. This was a pristine collection. But I suppose that doesn't matter to you. 
<laughs> you big oaf. <laughs> you big goof. Oh. He's not a well man now. The thing is, well, the people That's are... quieting him down. Ah, that'll cool your jets. <laughs> the, the thing is, the people are forgetting about this as well, is that this isn't like... This isn't Mankind's home. This is the boiler room of the stadium that they're currently in. Yeah. It's like, oh, he lives in the boiler room. Well... Oh, fuckers, Jim. You have to be more specific. Which boiler room? Yeah, because there are many. Mm. Not all boiler rooms are his home unless some kind of pocket dimension that he can travel to <laughs> free, freely <laughs> appearing in a boiler room in Michigan and then mere minutes later a boiler room in Orlando all boiler rooms at once <laughs> yeah it's, it's, this boiler room is all and none you can uh, you, I can just imagine there was someone just down there with, with their dungarees on you know with their wrench tightening a screw or whatever and uh, or a nut and then suddenly in the corner there's just a static noise and this kind of like horrible <laughs> figure of mankind in the corner you know <laughs> oh. oh mr mankind good to see you sir <laughs> would you like a bunk bed med <laughs> no mr mankind we're, we're fine for bunk beds thank you very much i've got too many since the last time you were here mankind's got a bigger old white arse there as well you see that <sighs> huge huge <laughs> ho, ho, ho. like a hippo's howl <laughs> Jesus, you wouldn't want Billy Gunn to be in the same room. <laughs> this room. He's crazy for ass. He loves ass. <laughs> I'm Billy Gunn, and I'm mad for home. <laughs> <laughs> I came here tonight for one reason and one reason only. To get my end away. I don't give a fuck if it's alive or dead, male or female. As long as it's got a back door, I can kick in. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you keep telling us that, Billy Gunn, but... <laughs> You're not getting it, lads. I'm mad for whole. All right, all right, Be- <laughs> Betty, we get you. Bart can back it up. Back that arse up. Isn't that right, Bart? <laughs> Stop it, Billy. Stop it. Billy, Billy, you can't handle it anymore. Billy. <laughs> I'm going to kill myself, Billy. <laughs> Shut up, or you know what you'll get. I mean, Billy, I'm an open-minded man. Oh, we're brothers, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's like, did you watch um, Jam? Jam. Is that Chris Morris? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. There, there's a, the radio show. Blue Jam. Yeah. There's a... There's... Oh, fucking hell. There's a... There's a horror fan bit... Where they're talking about um, how they found out that the son was gay. Oh, okay, how? Yeah. And so um, what they did was that the the h- husband distracted the boyfriend while the mum went and reminded her son of the joys of vaginal sex. And and they're telling this to like their best friend. They got their best friend in to tell yeah. them this. And then, you know, it was like, listen, I just... They're teenage boys. I I can't take it much more. It's like two or three times a day. I don't, I don't know if I can keep up with this, you know. I think I'd like you to. Ah, oh, still golden, Shawn Michaels, Brennan. And uh, and the guy's played by um, oh fuck, what's his name? He's a great actor. He he always work. He was in the um, he always works with Simon Pegg. Kevin Kevin L. Kevin Eldon. Yeah, Kevin Eldon. Yeah, it's it's him. He's the he's the friend. Oh, okay. You know, and he's like, I suppose I could. And the dad just goes, I'll come upstairs and I'll show you what he's into. And and, and but it's but like, it's done with like little Danny punchlines. You know, yeah. And it's just such an absurd and silly premise, and it just goes on that. Really, really, really weird. Oh fuck! What was that? Piss. Oh, scalding hot coffee. There we go. Scalding hot coffee. Hot coffee. So, you, yep, scalding hot coffee mod. They must have uh, been playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. <laughs> you want coffee, Undertaker? <laughs> Use the analog stick to gyrate. <laughs> Super <laughs> slam. <sighs> Brilliant. Straight X. There's the Undertaker. Go on, twat him, mate. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Got a big pub in the crowd. She's just lit left a piece of wood, just lying about like health and safety gone mad. I know. Where are they now? Huh? But I try and set up. I try and set up like a butcher in the back of my car, <laughs> and they're all over me. But you can leave a two by four wherever you want. <laughs> I mean, those meat hooks were just going to waste. Yeah, yeah. And what's wrong with what's wrong with slaughter, slaughtering an animal in the middle of the road? Mm-hmm. While you're driving. Yeah. Sure, people don't like it. Oh, as long as it's done away from their eyes, they don't mind. Oh, what, so you'd rather, like, I slaughter it in a car park where the blood can get everywhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a hazard, isn't it? Blood's yeah. incredibly slippy. Yeah. It's a, it's like a banana skin multiplied by five. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. It, it would make, like, silent movies a lot more horrifying if they just slipped on pools of half-coagulated <laughs> blood. Yeah. Oh, what are they They're watching that? themselves on the TV. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Did they have, like, a TV set up for the entire crowd to watch? They just yeah. had one single TV. No, they had them at all four corners. That is fucking crazy. <laughs> what about those people at the back? What the fuck are they going to watch it on? There must be some kind of Titantron type thing. Well, there is a Titantron behind them. Because this is one of the first times that I've actually seen the Titantron. Yeah. That is fucking bananas. Oh, God. They couldn't even get a big, decent TV. Yeah, it's pretty lame, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Exposing the concrete floor. Mankind exposing himself. (laughs) To the concrete floor. (laughs) (laughs) Do you like some of this? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Relax, Mick. Your worst oh, Billy Gunn. Jesus. <laughs> it's good selling. I'm Mick Foley. And I'm mad for concrete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, jeez, look at the fucking. Oh, Amazing. God. Paul Bear looks so well, doesn't he? He does not look well. Like, at he. All. The thing is, he lasted for almost 20 years after this. Yeah. You know, Paul Russ. Like that's it's it's crazy. Yeah. That that, that you know he, he would have been yeah. What age did he die at? Um, fuck, I don't know what age he died at, but he died a couple of years ago. He was on Celebrity Fit Club, I oh, think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because obviously weight had you know been a huge nice issue problem yeah. for him. Um. And and it was like like the man is obese. You know he's he's not got a bit. He's not like Vader. Where he's got a bit of pudge. Yeah. You know, like, fucking hell. Look at the chins on him. He's uh, he's like a thumb. The problem is, if he lost a bit of weight... Yeah. I don't know. Would, would he, like, the managers, they seem to like them to be stick thin. Or, Jesus Christ, that's a mad bum. Or huge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of the same with the wrestlers, to be honest. Yeah. Not stick thin, but like... Light and nippy, mm. or fucking muscle bound. Yes, yeah. And then either like, you're Brock Lesnar or you're, you know, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. The, the, they don't seem to like much in between. I don't know if that's the fans or the the bookers. Oh, yeah. it's Vince. That's his issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably. Do you know? No, no. It's a bit weird about this whole thing. I was just thinking about there. It's a Paul Bearer. If you just saw Paul Bearer's face, you'd assume that he just continues on like that forever. Much like our friend and colleague, Zippy. (laughs) (laughs) Who, as we all know, just continues on into a pyramid. Which, which, oh, did look at Paul Bearer and me giggle. Which actually makes this whole thing far more twisted if Paul Bearer was... You want to get put into an urn? <laughs> God almighty. And I think it might be the makeup as well, but he does look... Very sick. Oh, fuck. The man looks like he's inches away from a heart attack. Yes, give it a big clean. Shine it up real nice. Ha, <laughs> brilliant. And they missed it, though. That's a shame. 
Um, I do like this how he's he sits up and then he just like goes back to Mandible Clone. And yeah, yeah, goes, like, yeah. They freak out and back away, but yeah. he's like, "No, nope, I'll just do it again." <laughs> Excuse me a second, Paul. I have some unfinished business over here with this man who will simply not die. Oh, fuck. He dropped the dropped the urn. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. I love how he like, looked at himself like, Oh, Jesus, Paul, you did it again. Sometimes it's just... I just love too much. Oh, it's my problem. Oh, he's having, he's having a wheel of a time. Paul Bearer as well he's one of the guys who just he fucked over Undertaker so much yeah <laughs> like over and over, over again over and over and Undertaker kept taking him back ah it's a weird relationship that one huh yeah it's like a beaten wife yeah <laughs> you know like here he, he's and then later on he, he you know betray him for for Kian. it's fucking just weird like There you go. You wouldn't think that, that that's a stipulation. It's not really a boiler room brawl then, is it? It's more of a... Why? Yeah, it should have been like the first to leave the boiler room and make it to the ring would be the winner, maybe. Oh, fuck. But that's the, that's the thing. Like Maybe maybe the rules were said in the commentary. Like You can't really hear the commentary. Maybe yeah. there was some sort of like, oh, he has to do this. And then like maybe go in, lock horns, and then leave. Yeah. But then, why didn't Mankind, you know, whenever he cracked the Undertaker over the back of the head, just do it and then run out as quickly as he could? Good question. You know, as soon as he saw the Undertaker down, he should have just went, well, fuck, is he, what's, what's wrong? Has he ripped his, his pocket or something? Ha <laughs> ha, very smart. Oh yeah, it's up here, the brain. <laughs> Machiavellian. <laughs> <laughs> Machiavelli, of course, um, big fan of the Phenom. Huge fan. Mm -hmm. uh, every, day, every day before he'd sit down and write the prince, he would roll his eyes into the back of his head. <laughs> Have uh, one of his servants bring him in grapes or olives or whatever it was. Yeah. Give him the tombstone! Ah, <laughs> he did slowly run his thumb over his neck. You know, <laughs> There you go. And he's down. Are you not getting up so quick now, are you? Now that you've been hit by your magical urn. I think that man shaves his armpit. They all shave their armpits. Or wax them. At any rate. Do they, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Oh. What, what else could happen tonight? The monks? Aye. Yeah, there's the, there's the druids coming to take the under uh, the KKK. Yeah. If they're monks, then doesn't that mean that the Undertaker is some kind of Catholic or Shinto? Or sh yeah, good point. But yeah, it could be some kind of Buddhist sect. <laughs> Dedicated to the Undertaker. It's like, there is nothing in life. Only Undertaker. <laughs> Through his fulfilment, we gain peace. <laughs> but how is he fulfilled? The attainment of the championship belt. <laughs> As was written. It's, it's, yeah. Some of these lads were just hanging around backstage and nobody noticed them. One of that guy's wearing wrestling boots. And These he, are wrestlers. And he and he did roll. In, he did roll in um, quite wrestler like into the ring as well. Yeah, that man's been in a ring before. I wasn't always a monk. <laughs> I was semi pro out in the Midwest. He is wearing that though. Stampede wrestling. <laughs> it's where I cut my teeth <laughs> before I dedicated myself to the Undertaker. To Lord Satan himself. Because that's the thing, like, like, later on whenever he joins the corporate ministry, well, sorry, the Ministry of Darkness, he basically becomes Satan. Yeah, yeah. But it's... 
it's really I thought I thought that corporate ministry stuff was so lame. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like it's like oh he's Satan, but he doesn't really do anything. No, no. I so, mean, I mean, like him, kid, like that whole it was me, Austin. Yeah, that was really weird. Just <laughs> that's whenever I started watching it. Hello, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> So what you you put then you put her on a cross. Yeah, yeah, you used to crucify people. But like it was never like what was the end game? Yeah, cuz they weren't actually crucifying them. They were just like Put putting them on. zip ties on them. Yeah, putting them on the phenom symbol. But like to what end? If there was some I don't know implied brainwashing as part of that or yeah. I don't know then maybe. But like it was just like, "Oh, he put me on a cross for 5 minutes and then security took me down." Okay, it, was, it was awful hard. Yeah, well, well, I don't know. And he did it to Stone Cold as well. He crucified Stone Cold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, that was also the time of Gangrel. So. Yeah. Mistakes were made. Do you know that like, Gangrel never actually, um, they never mentioned that it was blood he was drinking? No, it was uh, Gangrel there drinking his raspberry juice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to pause it so we can uh, give our our feedback? So, what did you think of the Boiler Room Brawl numero uno? I enjoyed that, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, I think for the time that would have been amazing. Pretty high concept. Yeah. Quite yeah. Shot. Absolutely. I um, I loved it. I yeah I know that we were kind of talking our way through it, but I remember the first time seeing that and just being like fucking hell like this is, this is high concept you know like like they have an entire fight that's just set in such a small space, and it wasn't amazing like, but um, it looked like a fight it looked like a brawl it was a boiler room brawl it looked like a brawl it didn't look like it wasn't really well choreographed there wasn't loads of like um, huge high spots that then people get over with you know like. Every time he cracked him with something, it was like, fucking hell, he's actually hit him with a piece of wood. Like, that's... Yeah, yeah. He, he's not getting... He's not getting nowhere after that. Oh, he's up. Oh, <laughs> the yoke. But, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I don't think there's much else we can say about it. No, not really. I don't know. I thought the ending was a bit... Uh, the rules were unclear. If if it's a boiler room brawl and it starts in the boiler room shouldn't it be just to get to the ring Mm -hmm. and you win but there we go other than that I can't really say much negative about it no no you're right but you know like the whole point was that it was set up to be this um not really heel turn for Paul Bearer because you know well I suppose I don't know who was the heel going into it yeah that's the weird thing about Paul Bearer like He's always a heel. He's, yeah, he's kind of He's just, like the Hulk, you know, he's always angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'm always a heel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I suppose he would have been turning heels because The Undertaker would have been a fan favourite and maybe a face at the time. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, the next match is Shawn Michaels versus Vader. And it is coming up next. 